chances are you've seen this blimp, or at least a photo of it at some point in your life. But you are probably unaware that this very aircraft involves one of the most bizarre mysteries. During the Second World War, the U.S. Navy deployed L-class blimps provided by the Goodyear Company along the West Coast. They were to carry and deliver supplies and aid in surveillance measures. While patrolling, these blimps were mainly looking for Japanese submarines that may be posing a threat. On August 16, 1942, one of these very patrols was to take place. The L-8 blimp and designated Flight 101 was to take off from Treasure Island and recon the San Francisco Bay Area. The pilots aboard the flight were 27-year-old Lieutenant Ernest DeWitt Cody and 34-year-old Ensign Charles Alice Adams. It was Adams' first flight in this sort of blimp, but both men were trained and experienced pilots. Machinist Riley Hill was to partake in the flight, but was ordered off last minute, with most speculating that the blimp was already too heavy and couldn't carry all three men. After Hill made note that the aircraft was in perfect working order and had plenty of fuel, the two men departed. Flight 101 left at 6 a.m. and arrived a few miles east of the Farallone Islands an hour and a half later. At 7.42, they radioed into Treasure Island where they were located, mentioned that they spotted an oil slick, which can be caused by submarines, that they were going to investigate and to stand by. We're seeing something in the water. Going to take a look. Stand by. This would be the last time anyone heard from the two men. At the time, a Liberty ship and a boat of fishermen were out in the surrounding area and witnessed the next events. They claimed that the blimp circled the area where the oil slick had been reported, dropped two flares into the water as if to mark the location, and descended close to the water surface. Then, around 9 a.m., over an hour after their last radio call, the blimp quickly ascended and began its way towards San Francisco, instead of continuing its intended route. Treasure Island tried multiple times to get a hold of the crew, but to no avail. They alerted nearby aircrafts, and around 10.20 a.m., a Pan Am flight spotted the blimp near the Golden Gate Bridge. They reported that nothing seemed out of the ordinary, and Flight 101 seemed to be headed back to base. Ten minutes later, it was said that the blimp rose rapidly into the clouds, reaching altitudes that could be dangerous for such an aircraft, and were also against protocol. At 10.50 a.m., the blimp was then seen by beachgoers to have been deflating and hitting the sand. Multiple witnesses, from the fishermen to the people on the beach, claimed to have seen the men inside the gondola. Flight 101 bounced along the sand, rose, and hit the side of a hill, and then finally crashed in the middle of a daily city street. Hundreds of citizens and numerous officials were watching this unfold, and were on the scene immediately. To their surprise, the two crewmen were nowhere to be found, the state of the blimp upon crashing was peculiarly normal. There were multiple parachutes, an operational machine gun, and strangely enough, the radio was in complete working order. One of the pilot's hats was also still placed on top of the blimp's control panel, and a briefcase with important information remained locked and secured. Two life vests were missing, but it was mandatory to wear them while flying over water. The craft had hours of fuel left, and the lifeboat was still aboard and in place. One of the two underwater bombs remained on the blimp, and the other was later found to be knocked off while hitting the hill. Though there are a few odd observations, 
there was a leak in the blimp's helium, which could have happened because of the high altitude, that the gondola door was latched open on the outside, and the safety bar in the door had been removed. The engines were also idling, which leads to speculation that they were trying to slow down the blimp. Last, a microphone connected to speakers outside of the blimp was found dangling in the gondola, meaning perhaps one of the men was speaking to a nearby ship, or to his colleague who was outside of the craft. An extensive search was conducted by air, land, and water, but the men were never seen again. After the war, the blimp was returned to the Goodyear Company, where they repaired and refurbished it, and used it for promotional purposes until 1982. There are many theories as to what happened to Cody and Adams. One of the most logical explanations is that there was a malfunction that needed to be fixed on the outside of the craft. One man climbed out of the gondola to fix it, then fell, and when the other man tried to help, he also fell. As convincing as it may seem, it also discredits the multiple eyewitness reports of seeing the men in the gondola throughout the flight. The fishermen claimed to have been close enough to see the crew member's hair color, and they watched as they left the scene and headed back to shore. Not to mention, the men were most likely wearing their life vests, and a search was conducted not long after they were reported missing. Some people gravitate toward the notion that there was a Japanese submarine, and, somehow, they were able to apprehend the two men. This again lacks viable evidence, as the two ships at sea watched when the men left the area they had previously marked with flares. They clearly would have seen such an event take place, especially if an underwater vessel was trying to capture crewmen that were in the air. Another theory is that the men went AWOL and escaped while bumping into the hill. But if they had been planning an escape for some reason, one would think they would have equipped their parachutes for protection. They also had no reasoning to do such a thing. More outlandish theories involve one or two of the men being spies, an alien abduction, and a love triangle quarrel that resulted in a crime. The Navy's investigation concluded that there was no state of emergency. There was no fire on the blimp, no poor weather that day, and no possibility of a stowaway on board the flight. The pilots still had the capability to radio for help if they were in danger or needed assistance, but no further messages were ever received. What made these men vanish from this L-8 blimp? Was it a simple mistake that unfortunately led to both men perishing without a trace? Or was it something more sinister?